We're gonna be bad boys today, buddy. Bad boys for life. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. I'm a troublemaker, and this video is sponsored by Watch Shells. But today, we are looking at Nico Leonard's, his most famous series, Ranking Watches. Yes. From Hublot, which is below, Shite, to God Tier, which is only for Casio. Casio. <laughs> and we're picking our, the ones that we don't agree with. And yes. we're going to explain as to why. Hublot is going to be the, probably the grand finale, but there's, a, there's quite a few on this list that... It's obviously, it's Nico's opinion. It's right. Nico knows what he's doing. Nico runs the Watch YouTube game, so yes. he's very smart in that regard. But we'll say what we think and then uh, go from there. Yeah, basically there are a couple of areas where we think that he's wrong, although it's just his opinion. And uh, and that's it. We're just going to uh, we'll just gonna talk about watches. I want to save Rolex and Hublot for last because yep. I feel like those will be big hitters. Yep. I think for the most part we don't agree. Yep. Let's start with Cartier and AP because, yep. well actually, let's start with Cartier first because that yep. is in class and Nico was quoted saying, and I'm paraphrasing, that Cartier will teach, will sometimes teach the world how to make watches again. I fundamentally disagree with him. That is a very big thing to say. It's a very big thing to say. Yes. I don't necessarily know if anyone, any brand is paying attention to Cartier and knowing what they're doing. And he used this Cartier magic, you know, mystery floating, you know, rotor well, watch as an example. That has been around, not in watch form really, but in like just desk clocks mm -hmm. and stuff for a very long time. It's yeah. uh, sapphire discs that everything rests on, that's why it's But spins. the particularly genius part about this was Cartier actually made the movement the rotor, right? Exactly, The, the rotor yes. is literally the movement. It's wild, right? So it rotates itself. Like, it's like, it's like you said, it's like making a, a, a car with a wheel. A car. Yeah, exactly. it, yeah. it, it makes no sense. This was brilliant. This was a stroke of brilliance. It, it makes almost no sense for a Cartier brand. It's, it's so divergent from their collection. Cartier, and I love Cartier, everyone knows that, but they generally make watches that, um, they, Cartier generally makes watches that, that are, you know, overpriced, they're cashing in modern on... Modern Cartier. Uh, modern Cartier. Yes. Overpriced watches that are generally cashing in on prior achievements, i.e., you know, historical designs, like the Centrari, like the Tank Louis, all these things. Yes. I love Cartier. Yes. Um, but I... I I, I'm not a big fan of their modern collection. The most exciting you're ever going to get, you know, about Cartier for people is really like, you know, uh, is, is, is is a reissue. You know, that's it. I mean, it's just like talk about they playing, are. You know, to me, they feel very much like a reissue brand. I are. like I like their standard tank, but a tank is a tank. Yes, but but Nico's right. They do have these, you know, these 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 fabulous, very limited production pieces, these hot horology pieces. Again, they're unstoppable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It makes no sense that it comes from the Cartier brand. It looks it, 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 it would come from. How, how, right? Yeah, how do you make such incredible stuff and then everything else you just kind of like, well, I just do a Yeah, you kind of mail it in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that those watches are the exception, not the rule. So that's why I would not put Cartier as high as, uh, as, high as he did. That being said, I mean, again, his entire ranking system is, is, is very like the personal interest, not objective quality. So yeah, yeah. he is he's personally interested in Cartier. He's not saying that it is better than some of these other things like, like A. Langenzona. I think he's saying uh, that I would be more likely to buy it. Yes, you know, so yes. that's, that's that's a different. Which he does say with AP. I'll touch on AP very quickly. He does say he wants a watch from AP so bad. Yeah, which he does reference the Royal Oak. He references the DJ watch from AP. Yep. which is my kind of thing. Like AP to me would buy. I wouldn't put it. Well, I should say this. I wouldn't put modern AP in class. I would put vintage AP, like the one in the shop. Mm -hmm. I forget which one that was specifically. The perpetual calendar. Yeah, so that was that, that was that was an annual calendar. Yes, annual calendar. No, no, that was just a date, but that was amazing. Oh my! And that yes. what they what AP was putting out. I don't know if there's anything in the shop right now, but they were putting out then to me class, and that I could see why Cartier and AP would be there. Yes. Now AP I pushed down to Woodby because right. they have the code eleven fifty nine, which yes. you really like, but. To me, it's a, it's a Royal Oak rebranding company at this point. It, it, it is. It is. I, I agree with that. I will say that occasionally they really do hit it. Uh, I think that the chronograph, which everyone knows that I like, was fabulous. Yes. Uh, yeah. they, but it's a Royal Oak, right? It's, it's a Royal Oak, yes. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it, it did take a little bit of work. Like, it wasn't just you reissuing the jumbo. 
right? Reissuing right. the jumbo is pretty much that's that's the easy part. Yes. Um, the other stuff can get a little bit on the difficult side, including chronographs. Yep. You know. Yep. Um, long story short, I really don't put uh, I don't put you know Cartier on the same level as AP. I definitely do put AP above Cartier. Above. Um, yes, even though yeah. Cartier does have, even though AP does have its own you know, issues when you compare it with other brands, right? Sure. Um, but 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 I do put I do put these on things on different levels. Now put AP next to Long and Zona. You know, and and I'm again taking personal taste out of this. I he put it two two levels down in meh. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a hot take. This 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 is my second point of disagreement here. You know, again, he's not looking at it from objective quality, which is which is where I'm looking at it. Of course. But fucking a, I mean, Longa Longa runs laps around AP. Generally speaking, Uh, Longa is is, Longa is really the they're not in the Holy Trinity, but they're they're the disruptor of the Holy Trinity. Oh, for sure. That for the most part, in my opinion, has been embarrassing. Members of the Holy Trinity since they relaunched. Yes, and they're not without flaw. Of course, uh, you know, Long is not without flaw. Their history is one to. Well, I don't even mean the Nazi stuff. <laughs> I th- That's how you know. They're I'm flawed. not talking about that. Oh, story. come on, come Michael. On. Oh my God, you're so trendy. <laughs> no, um, but no, I, I really, you know, I, they're not without flaw. I think that their Odysseus, I don't think is groundbreaking. Sure. Uh, and that's yep. their newest watch, and I, I don't think it. I don't think it was. I think it didn't even hold a candle to the other times a, 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 a Long and Zona has released a watch. I don't think it holds a candle. Right. Right. When they released right. the Datagraph, the world changed. You know, the Longa one. Oh, the whole Longa story is remarkable. No, I don't think they've really brought the heat lately. I don't. I don't. I also think Long and Zona has a. They have their own issue, right? The Long and Zona issue is an issue of culture. Okay. Um, sure. It is yeah. because their brand identity does not really fit in modern culture, right? They are dress, they are complicated dress watches. And that is not where Whoa. we are. That's not where we are as a society. Well, look at this, ready? The Nico's class line, which is what I think the, the brain blast is. Cartier will say uh, the Santos sport watch, but again, I'm gonna move them to the side. AP, Tudor, Richard Mill, Vacheron Constantine, Paddock, and F.B. Jorn mm. all just fit that bill. Yes. And yes, they are reacting. A longer does not. You're exactly right. Nor does Bulgari. Uh, yeah. and, and, and Bulgari, I would say, I mean, again, on quality, of course it's better than Cartier. Of course it's better than Tudor. I think that Bulgari's b- largest problem is a well rounded collection. I think the Octo Finissimo is one of the most brilliant watches to come out in the last 10 years. I would agree. I really think it's brilliant. Uh, we have a friend with with one of them. With two. With two. We're, we're, we're right. almost two. They're phenomenal. They're 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 original. They're, they're not pushing good. the boundaries with the perfectly polished one, titanium, ceramic, the sketch one. But I will say that the Octo Roma and and the that is uh it, they're nice, but I, I it's it's a cheap Octo Finissimo. Can we make key. it work again? And I don't think it's I don't think it's correct. I don't think that Bulgari has a has a great collection. Uh, a great watch. Not a great, not great Octo Finissimo, not a great collection. So I, I do think that that, that holds them down. The yes. Octo Finissimo, if it was his own brand, would be two levels above Bulgari or Bulgari, right? It'd be exactly. two levels above. Of course. Um, but the brand itself needs work. Fine. Um, Although, Breguet and Orient on the same level. You know, again, I know he's doing it with personal appeal. But it's really stripping. I, I, it's, it's tough because it's stripping. I, I don't even know how to explain. You're stripping certain aspects from these watches when you're reviewing them mm-hmm. you know like being like a like your gold GMT is the same as my GMT except yours is white gold and right. it's like okay well then it's not the same it's right. white gold right so yeah that's fascinating what are your thoughts um, I mean I think it's I think it's, I think he's wrong obviously but again I, I just I just wouldn't take his approach and he, within his approach of just how much he wants them I get it I do not understand like I get the Orient love I mm. get it Right, I I told I'm not an Orient guy. I don't own a Bambino, yep. um, but I get it. Right, he's a hell of a baseball player. They do a they do a phenomenal job um, uh, delivering affordable, approachable, budget automatic mechanical watches. As the citizen, which is also in this list. But hold on, how the f- do you put Breguet and Orient? Fine, I can understand the argument next to Bramant. You know, and Bramant's fine, but there is no angle, and I'm a. F- marketer right like I am a, we are marketers exactly yes the, what is the angle that you're going to c- convince me that Bramant belongs because I understand how you could put Breguet next to Orient right because we can write love letters to both of them in their own way sure. and say this is why I appreciate for different reasons I f- love them equally yes yes Bramant 
come on. You know, and that's, you know, and Nico, I'm hyping up like you and your videos, right? But like, you get me excited. Like, that's a, that's a little bit silly. Yeah, and now right. you're talking to me fucking stupid. Yeah, right. Like, I'm fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that I, I don't I don't agree with him there. Yeah. Um, I think that both of those brands, both of those brands, put them on the same level, fine for different reasons. They're both above Vermont. They're both. Here's a uh, so we're, we're <laughs> tag gonna... too. I mean, come on, Nico. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what part of this is too is that it's just such a big audience with big pocketbooks and small pocketbooks. It's a, a really a masterclass in getting everybody's budget on a certain level of the list. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, okay. Well, but I, I love want... that, though. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that's part of the, like, uh, uh, and I don't think the three that you just brought up are kind of part, uh, kind of a point where it's like, wait a minute. If I'm in this budget, why are you recommending this? Right. But it, you can see kind of how it's brilliantly laid out where class has Cartier, AP, Tudor, lower budget guys, yes. Richard Mill, Paddock, F.P. Jean. You know? Yes. Someone's like, oh. Tutors in class. Yes, and Rolex uh, is in Met, which we'll get to at the end. But right, still. right, yeah. That, you know, he, he framed it. He framed it in a very interesting way. But I agree with him completely about about looking at the watch collecting community as you know as um or rather the watch watch collecting as it's very easy to categorize things by price. Right? Of course, we all we can all count. Uh, we could put this by price easily. Fine. Like a more interesting perspective is price independent. And again, it comes down to back to the word that we basically built this entire company on was value, yes. right? Yeah. It's Orient is delivering a rem like like a remarkable, remarkable value, value, very similar to Breguet, yeah. right? Now, these are grossly different things. There are some lovable things equally, right? And they're not different for different reasons, but but Vermont, I disagree with. Chopard, I disagree with. Yeah. Um, I, 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 this, yeah. The man line is really the, the hard line for I me, mean, right? Do you have H Moser? I, I how do you have Tag and Grand Seiko in the same category? I mean, Grand Seiko, fascinating. Grand right. Seiko is a brilliant company, and and here's another thing that I don't think that he addressed here, right? With JLC, and this is another conversation yep, that buy. I uh, would would buy JLC. Yep. Okay. So okay. So taking uh, moving Nico's perspective aside, look, moving the way that he's looking at it aside. Sure. You know, compare Grand Seiko to JLC. Which one? Which one of them is better? Which one of them is delivering more value? In general or in, in their high horology? General? In general. I mean, you can, you know, include those exceptions into the equation. Yes. But that doesn't prove the rule. I, uh, I would say JLC, it's, t it's a very tough call. The tough part is JLC has found their one watch. I don't the know reverso. if Grand Seiko has yet. No, I don't know if Grand Seiko is looking for that. You're right. Grand Seiko has. You, Grand Seiko does not have a reverso. Exactly. Rolex is so successful because they caught that like five, fifty times. times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which yeah. is insane. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, lightning in a bottle, right? Yeah. Um, but that being said, Grand Seiko and I love JLC. Fuck, everyone knows I love JLC, right? Yeah, of course. Um, but the with the bar we set for JLC is much lower. Uh, to say, wow, that's a great JLC. Uh, JLC can do because the reverso is great anyway. Reverso is great. Someone hands you a reverso from the cheapest one to the most yeah. expensive. I'm like, ah, it's oh, a, a great one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have a you can uh, sit back ultra thin frosted dial reverso, and you're like, wow, that's amazing. That's so good. Grand Seiko does a watch that is far more original, far more inventive, yeah. and and Grand Seiko people love it. Open-minded watch enthusiasts love it, but the world doesn't. The world doesn't go nuts. I think because the they, they don't way. have that piece yet. They don't have it yet. They yes. will they because will. of their experimentalism. They yes. will. They will. Yeah. Yeah. But but JLC also has all this history behind them. I mean, they've got obviously branding that that that. that I mean, Grand Seiko will never catch up. No one will catch up. Right? Like like no one that is below them history. While well, you can't catch up to history, right? Unless yes, exactly, unless Grand, exactly. unless unless JLC just starts being a total piece of company, which will never happen, right. their, 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 their legacy will always be there. And we should consider a legacy, but it's not the be-all and end-all, right? And I think it's fascinating because you could see Grand Seiko's trajectory with the Kodo release. Right. I forget the JLC one, but it's like, it's a massive reverso that tracks like five different yeah. constellations yeah, and yeah, moves. Yeah, I've seen this. 
but it does show. I feel like Grant Seiko's like, oh yeah, we're, we'll be there in a little bit. Like, yes. we're on our way to doing these things. Like, look at the coda. Another another example that I disagree with here is the placement of Piaget. Now, I understand that he wouldn't buy Piaget. Shite. That yes. for him, that for him, it's it's not on the table to buy. I get that. You have no interest in it. I have never walked into walking to Piaget and bought a Piaget. I understand that, but I also understand that you know, and I'm sure he does as well. It's just you know, from a different perspective, that Piaget is a far better watch manufacturer than many of the Movement many maker. of the brands yeah, okay, yeah that, that are far above right uh, uh, Tag Heuer obviously uh, you know uh, Tissot I mean it's, it's IWC I mean like Piaget may not interest you right? and a large part of that is cultural culturally today the, the brands just or culture is just sportier, you know? And I think that we're coming a little bit more towards the center, you know? Um, I mean, think about how it's changed in the last 15 years. You know, we went from Breitling for Bentley, yep. right? Which to, is crazy, a crazy time crazy period. crazy to think about that, just that, that wasn't that long ago. You're right. And now you've got Breitling making, you know, split-second chronographs. Yeah. You know, so, the so appreciation culture for has gotten is, better. Yeah, of course. Um, but it's still not totally there for dress watches. Yes. So I think that's why... Brands like Piaget and brands like Longazona oh. and, and Bulgari, well, I'll even leave Bulgari out, but those watches are just not as famous or not as liked, not because they miss it on the merit, but because culturally they're just not, they're not it, right? They're, yes. they're not pop music. Yes. You know, they're, yes. they're, I don't know, what's obscure music? Uh, ska. I was, I was like, <laughs> <"Scott>, <laughs> really? I was! That's hysterical! We just immediately kiss. Wow, like, what, what the, the f- f- Oh my god! <laughs> we lose all of our following. Oh god! Yeah, yeah, like that's it. Just from that, really, that 10 second blip, wow. it cuts right back to normal. Before we get into the final super dramatic picks, this video is sponsored by Watch Shells. So, I am living a very good example of why one might want to wear watch shells. Yes, you are. Uh, yes. 100%. Uh, right now, I, I just recently bought a, a white gold GMT, um, and and yes, I believe in embracing wear. Right? I, I, I get it. I, I, I completely get it. But the previous owner of this watch might have... They really embraced wear. They really wear. embraced wear, I think, yeah. maybe a little bit too much. Yes. Um, so, so, uh, it's white gold, so it's, it scratches extra it easy. It scratches extra easily. It's pretty beat up, and the truth is that... Um, that this watch, while beautiful, yes. there are a lot of people out there that would look at this and say, oh. <laughs> not not super good. I mean, not I got your call. Nice. You were frustrated. Yeah, I was frustrated when I got it, right? Yeah. So the point is ownership and responsibility and ownership. And I think that we need to take good care of our luxury items. Yes, there's a certain level of charm to beating beating something up and allowing it to go for a lifetime. There's a charm to the fisherman that, ne- that never cleaned his watch, right? There's some some sort of charm there. But I get it. that's dirt versus scratch. Well, yeah, but even like beat it up, I, I get it. I, 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 sure. I would make a film about that, right? The fisherman that wears a gold, yellow gold sub and it's a disaster, right? I, yeah. I, I get it. But that's very rare, and it's definitely the exception, not the rule. Yes, okay, yes. I believe in, in responsible ownership. I believe in treating things with dignity. And I know that I'm not alone in that. And that's why I'm glad to introduce watch shells to a whole new audience. Yes. Because uh, I'm, 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 we'll, get, we'll get into all the details. Sure. But it's a fantastic way to preserve your watch. Can it be a little bit anal? Is it for anal people a little bit? Well, to a level. To because a level. You could do... You could do just the uh, actual dial of the watch. You can do just the bracelet. Or you can literally do every single piece of any major watch. Yes. So what's fascinating about watch shells is that it is. it looks like it could be, like you probably most closely associate it with a, like a phone protector. Mm-hmm. It's not that. It's actually dramatically better, dramatically higher quality. Yes. My favorite detail about it is that the edges of mm-hmm. every cutout are slightly rounded. Yep. So that way it stays on. Yep. I think that's brilliant. My biggest concern about it was if I get it wet, will it come off? Yes. It will not. Yes. It is very, very water resistant. The other concern is, well, this is going to look like trash in a little bit if the sun's hitting it. It's going to yellow. Yes. After 10,000 hours of direct sunlight, it has yellowed less than 1%. Yes, it's amazing. So it's fantastic. It's a, the product itself is remarkable. Yes. Now, my biggest concern with watch shells, and, and, and the reason why I was ready to totally write it off legitimately, and, and you know, was I don't want to see anything on my watch but the fucking watch. I want exactly. to see my Rolex. You don't want to look like a nerd. You don't right. want a case for your watch. I'm not wearing a, a pen protector or a pocket exactly. protector, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, that being said, 
I literally was introduced to watch shells before before we came in contact with watch shells. Introduced by a client who wrapped actually his Samara, uh, his GMT, and all of his Rolex oysters with watch shells. And I, I swear, from across the table, even from pretty fucking close, I could not tell at all that watch shells were on this watch. Very hard to tell. Very difficult. Fantastic, fantastic quality. Basically invisible. Yes, under close examination, you can tell. Yes. Um, and and uh, yes, but. Uh, fantastic quality. So what you can do is one, look at Watch Shell's review on their website. Yep. They literally have thousands and basically every single one of them has a picture to yep. accompany it. Yep. So you can see how it would look on your watch and see what people actually think about it, which is fantastic. Yep. And they have free worldwide shipping. Mm -hmm. So they will get that out to you. They send spares just in case, but it's incredibly easy to apply. It's amazing. It's an incredible value add. Thank you to Watch Shell for sponsoring today's video. And I highly suggest that if you're the sort of person that likes to protect their watch and believes in responsible ownership, that you should absolutely Absolutely take a look at watch shells and see what it is they do. You have so, nothing to lose. That's it, nothing to lose. Let me let me tee you up for two. We're gonna save Ublo for last. Yep. I want to give you three brands Tell because me. they're all tied in together. Hit me with it. We have Woodbuy. Well actually, okay. We have Class, Tudor, Woodbuy, Omega, Meh, Rolex. What is that to you? What what are you what are you looking to? We'll take this tier to yes. to just be three. Yes. The lowest is Rolex. Omega yes. is second. Yes. And Tudor is top. Yes. So so that's silly, right? Like I understand why you would pit Rolex and Omega against each other completely. They and, they're the classic clash. Yeah, and there's an there's an argument to be made that Omega is a better buy. I I get it. You yeah. know I get it. I mean you know I get it. Uh, I, I'm not wearing a white gold Seamaster right now. That's true. But I that's get it. Beautiful. Watch. Uh, that's a cool watch. Wow. Um, but uh, that being said, if we look at Tudor as the but kid Tudor, that cheated on. off of Flex's paper. Yeah, come on. I know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on. I mean, I, I feel like the mad category is because of the unavailability right. and everything behind that. But right. no one is going to see your tutor and be like, Smart man. Right. Didn't get the Rolex, a piece of trash. Right, yeah, exactly. You know? And again, I love to, we both love Tudor. I love Tudor. Yeah. Um, and we want to just give it due praise. But do praise, not 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 you know uh, too yeah. much. You know we yeah. have to be fair about the praise that we give. We give Tudor, love it, great brand. Putting it above Omega, I, it's just it's just so far from the truth. Again, Tudor, I would put as would buy because it has tremendous value. If he's more likely to buy a Tudor than an Omega, that I completely understand. Sure. I get that. Yeah. Um, but if we're looking at quality, we it's it's a silly conversation because I don't even think that Tudor, in any way, tries to compete with Omega's quality. Omega no. is Omega. You're, you're, they're too big and they're too motivated. They're just they're. It's you're not going to beat them on quality. You're you know not, you're just yeah. not. Not at that price point. You're just not. Right. They're a fucking monster. Exactly. They're a creature from the Black Lagoon. They're, they're sweating everywhere, right. baby. They're sweating everywhere. So they sweat when they eat, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, uh, 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 Tudor, great watches, great value, super recommend. Good job, Nico. I get it. Not better than Omega, though. Not from a quality point of view. And I, this video, I believe, was done before Omega's chiming watches. And I know Nico says it, a brand doesn't have to do something well for a year for it to move up. They have to like embrace this, not do like one special yes, watch. Yes, I agree with that. But I do think chiming has put Omega to me from Woodbuy to class. Uh, yeah. That is the history behind it, the tie-in between the first watches, the Olympics integration, the Speedmaster. That, to me, shows... Not only, because they could have just made this complication in one watch. Right. But that shows we are paying homage to our greatest achievements yep. by doing some something no one has ever done yep. in a way that no one has ever seen. Yes. So that, to me, I'm like, Ugh, your trajectory is yes. very, very high. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Where would you put Rolex, though? Me, well, you know, uh, meh would buy classic Again, I, you know, it's, just, you know, it's, 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 it's. Uh, it's an odd ranking system, okay? Much respect, Nico. You know, it's an odd ranking system. Well, I will continue to say your ranking system for 655,000 people watching. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Nico's... It's really... Yes. Every single one of those people is like, great. Yep. That's my budget. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, if, if, if this is likely to buy, clearly Rolex is... Within the, it's the top level. My, yeah, my hot take Rolex, is I put Rolex at God tier. Rolex at retail to me is yes. God tier. Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, if we're not looking at just measuring quality, but we're looking at the likelihood of actually wanting to buy a watch, Rolex is fantastically priced, I think. Rolex it appeals to... Rolex appeals to very human... Forget about Forget about the market that's crazy. Forget about the fact that everyone wants them. It's just very human. 
to like a Rolex. Uh, they're smooth. It, it is. Send that to send that to yes. big man. Yes, uh, it's it's very human, right? The you know the 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 watch design. I mean, it's it's sporty, fine, yes, but it's also again like that. Like you know what you know. What? Here, here's something interesting. What did I? Always, what do I always say about the brilliance of Gerald Genta? That he juxtaposed elegance, right, with mm-hmm. you know y- 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 industrial design. Yep. Right. Yeah. Tool and elegance. Yeah. Tell me, like, 1952 or 53, Rolex released the Submariner, which was a tool watch, right? But not built like a block of steel. Remarkably elegant in the bracelet throughout. Right? Yeah. Thin, oyster bracelet. Looking at a Rolex right. oyster like, from the side, you're like, wow. Now, you know? now, the Rolex Submariner was not marketed as a luxury status symbol. Correct. But that is probably the only major difference, right? If Rolex, if the Rolex Submariner was marketed as a luxury status symbol mm-hmm. back in the 50s, mm-hmm. uh, not just the best tool watch you could buy, but a luxury status symbol, they would have done what Gerald Genta did 20 something years later. But I first, think, I think that is incredibly. I mean, look correct. at the, the, every, the, the tapers are beautiful. The, the the proportions are great. They're great watches. Do we hate everything around them? Yes, I hate that you can't buy a Rolex. It's fucking bullshit. Because years ago, when you know, when my it dad bought fed, his yeah, fucking it was GMT, large. it was the Here's only a discount. Thing, the only thing standing between you and your dream watch is money. Right, and that was beautiful. Right, right? that was it. Was if you can, if you can earn this, you can have it. You can have a now. Rolex. It's ridiculous you yeah know, oh, it's absurd and, and it's, it's gotten very, better but it's absurd yes and i know? think i think just of you saying it's very human to want a rolex yes. is um truth it's, it's fact fact yeah. i should say not yeah. opinion basically everybody yes i have worn so many watches mm-hmm. like very expensive watches very cheap watches whatever nothing gets attention like a rolex yes you know what i mean and nothing will ever i'm setting my gmt right now Hell yeah, as you should. As I should. You just sold yourself, didn't you? time has been wrong. Yeah, I sold myself on this watch. <laughs> Good thing I paid for it six hours ago. <laughs> I know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, we can, we can go on and on about this for a long we time. We have our and, grand finale and, at and the And we'll end, do but... our own. Yeah, what's the grand finale? Hublot. Hublot. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, what is it's it belong? It, it, it's its own thing. It's, it's below, below shit. Shit. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I disagree. I, again, I'm not a big Hublot fan, um, but I do like them enough. I do like some of their watches. I think it, the, what, what, I, what I said fairly recently in, the, in a recent yes, video yes. was there are watches in the Hublot catalog that compared to their similarly priced watches from other brands the Chrono Fusion are actually pretty cool. I think that while we can only, you can't possibly afford... Well, a Rolex, well, you can't. Rolex, I can't. I can't. <laughs> a Rolex B. <laughs> this watch is so heavy. Oh, Ugh. I should have gone for steel, not white gold. <laughs> you think working is hard? Try carrying this. <laughs> the Rolex Beach Daytonas, those those crazy cool dials. Yep. Fantastic watches. Yep. Love them. Yep. Can't get one. They're too expensive. Too expensive. Hublot achieves a very similar, right? Fun sport thing. Chronograph. It's cool. It's a cool. It's a fucking cool idea. Like, that's a crazy watch. It's playful. Yeah. That's fun. When yeah. you have a lot of money, or at any point, but, but but particularly when you get when you have a lot of money and you start you no longer buy the thing that you need to have, you start buying the things that you want. A lot of people want to have fun. Yes. So I think that a fucking yellow or a light blue fucking chronograph on a rubber strap is actually cool. It's insane. It's nuts. It's Do nuts. I like the classic fusion? No, I think a lot of them are fucking shit. I think you blows done horrible things. I think they I think they were built to be a cash cow, not a watchmaker. We've talked I about that. I don't like yeah. Hublot, you know, in it in its core. But there are watches that I think are cool, and I do think that it's, you know, how about this? Okay. You know, I'm going to make you rank it at the end, but don't say it yet. Well, well, the same thing that I said about Bulgari, Bulgari, right? Yeah. The Octo Finissimo is disproportionately good. Mm. I feel the same way about some Hublots. So, there are some Hublots, right? yeah, same. that are disproportionately good. That are actually great watches and it's almost a shame that they belong to a brand that that has done some yes, type of thing exactly. not as bad as Longa not as right <laughs> <laughs> hear what he said Jew eat Jew, not did you eat Jew, Jew eat. eat you know for a fact I walked into the store he was playing Wagner Wagner Max <laughs> stop calling me Max what's your name it's Max so where did you put Ublo? and you don't where have to do follow I put up Ublo? because I'm going to put it somewhere after it's not in likeliness of you know, honestly like Again, I, I, I know this Unique is going to get list. bad f-ing comments. I, uh, it's going to get bad comments. I'm sorry. I may even beat you. But like when it comes to 
if it's a likelihood to refer a watch, to tell someone to buy a watch, and if someone comes to me looking to spend between twenty and thirty thousand dollars on a chronograph, the odds that I'm going to tell them if I think that they're cool, like fun, yeah, to buy a hublot, yeah. are actually kind of high, guys. I'm sorry, they're Maybe high. Say the say the level. Yes, I bet we're probably the same I, one. I put them definitely on would buy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. So would I. I know. I know. I, know. I would put them on would buy. Yeah. Not all of them. No, but some of them. 100%. For sure. No doubt. And Let's I will that to court. Here. Thank you, Nico, for this video, because we wouldn't have uh, made it if you didn't make this uh, great chart. Yes. Thank you. We love you.